Bigfoot, Bigfoot, roaming through the land. Bigfoot, Bigfoot, a hairy a black man. Hello, my friends and fellow Bigfoot enthusiasts. Welcome to another episode of Bigfoot Today, the show that's all about Bigfoot. I'm your host, Stephen Major, and with me is my co-host, Mitch the Man Johnson. How you doing, Mitch? Very well. Thank you for having me back. Um, this is going to be a very good episode, so I'm just going to leave it at that. Wonderful. And I'll tell you what, we're very excited with the guests that we have coming up here in just a little bit. Uh, Kevin Llewellyn, very experienced BFRO investigator, and uh, just excited to have him on the show. He's got some wonderful things to share with us. And right now, we'll be right back after a short break. This show is sponsored by Extreme Expeditions Northwest LLC, your gateway to adventure, specializing in guided Bigfoot expeditions to Alaska and throughout the Pacific Northwest and Canada. All right, my friends, well, welcome back. This is the time of the show where we talk about what's new in Bigfoot and also do our film review. Mitch, what's new? You know of anything? A lot of interesting things going on. Um, Reaching out um, for confidentiality reasons and whatnot, but very, very reliable. There is a production company that wants to go back in, or go in, I shouldn't say back in. It's not the same as what you went with, um, to go back into Port Chatham. And so it's... um, very interesting. I'm very excited to see what they come up with. Um, I guess one of my questions to you to start with, though, is having been there for three, three different times, yeah. and I'm a big believer that we learn from our experiences, what would you like to see from this upcoming expedition going into Port Chatham? Because I think I made it perfectly clear, I don't want to see the same old tired thing of Elmer Fudd walking through the forest <laughs> looking for Sasquatch. Not to say you're Elmer Fudd, but I'm just like, oh, oh. You, you know, all that, just the back of guys' heads walking around in the woods. Yeah. So I want to see something different. So do you have any ideas on that? Well, uh, to be honest with you, I don't know much about it. I, I, I've kind of heard the same rumor. that. But uh, just if you, just hypothetically, that, well, we'll cut. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. What we were going to do is we, you know, I've already been to Port Chatham three times. The initial trip was when we did our recon in 2018, June of 2018, when Adam Davies and I and uh, our cameraman, Josiah Martin, went out there to do our initial recon before the full-blown expedition and film that was going to come up. And that was the first trip by any Bigfoot investigators into Port Chatham in Alaska. We were the first. Right. In the history of it, and uh, which was very significant. Uh, the first to go out there. And then we followed that up with our film in search of the Port Chatham Hairy Man that a lot of people have seen and uh, really enjoyed making the film there. Um, and then we came back in uh, May of 2019 and we did the, you know, the, that episode for the Alaska Triangle. Their version of it was the Hairy Man of Port Chatham. If you haven't seen that, they did a really great job with that. Yes, they did. Now, <clears throat> to get back to your question, when you're asking me what I would like to see is this. What I would like to see... Is, some, is something really significantly new done up there. And, and, and this is what I mean by that. We've never been able to go into Port Chatham, Alaska and spend more than four days in there. So you can't really accomplish a lot in four days. What I would like to see is in the next expedition that goes into Port Chatham mm. goes in there better funded than us with the ability to stay on the ground for at least 30 days. That's what I would like to see, especially if you're going to shoot a multi-part series. And I heard it was a multi-part series, not mm-hmm. a movie. Sure. But to be able to do that, I think you would really be able to uncover some significant evidence and maybe have a sighting. Well, now, I establish had a, a residency, if you will. Well, and, and even what I would like to see is some sort of a, a living pod, uh, you know, a pod that, you know, a yeah. living unit that would maybe be helicoptered into the middle. Because yeah. we definitely not going to have roads coming right. in there. But... Um, and then just kind of set up and yeah. and um, kind of commune with nature and Sasquatch, and um, you know, and, and do that stuff. I don't know that that's ever been done. It's it, because of uh, monetary or uh, constrictions. It's just it's well, usually it's, just it, a quick in and and then and yeah. that's it. Well, part of the problem is it's very expensive to get out there. Yes, I mean you've got to have the gear, you have to have a boat, you you know it, all of these things, and you have to also have there's safety considerations now the, from weather, animals, and things of that nature that you're going to run into out there. There's a lot of hazards. But there's a, a lot of uh, sorry, I'll put my accountant hat on for a second. A lot of those expenses are just fixed cost of getting there. Yeah, the only variable is 
the Mamby Pamby film people who don't want to be out there for that long. And, yeah. you know, I don't think any of the researchers, whoever's involved in this, have a problem with going out there and staying for a month yeah. or two even. But, oh, I don't want to be out there that long if you're one of the <laughs> film guys. And, and, yeah. and, and those are the cats that we don't like. And I'll, re I'll explain my reference to cats later. Okay, okay. Well, yeah, I, I agree with you on that. So anyways, in a nutshell, that's what I would like to see. Good. Is to go out there and to be able to do it seriously and not just throw together some quick film that, you know, has a lot of uh, false or fake drama in it without really spending the time out there to do significant investigations. Because we never got to accomplish our mission the last time we were out there. And what the mission was, was to travel up what we call the Valley of Death up to the lake of no return. We've never been able to get up there. And it's usually because we ran out of time, but this last trip, it was because of the weather. I mean, we had some people that were getting hypothermia. It was very cold. I mean, the conditions were very, very bad. The weather was rough and we couldn't stay any longer. But the reason that it's important for us to get up to that lake, and I call it the lake of no return because supposedly that's where sheep hunters, adult sheep hunters went and they never came back, is the trackway uh, that we found of the 14 inch tracks was leading up into that valley and we sent our drone up there and we believe that we uncovered some possible cave entrances and things like that so i would like to see that area investigated. lots more to explore yeah, yeah. lots and more so, awesome anyways Perfect. we'll see what happens with that very good anything else um awesome things but we're going to do that the next episode wonderful wonderful well um that's going to be interesting to see him go back into port chat. Yes. Yeah, I'm very excited to see what they come up with, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Hope I wish them the best. So, yeah. As always. As always. And, uh, okay. Well, I don't have uh, much else that's new to talk about, so now it's time for our movie review. Yes. And we've got another good one for you. Um, some of you may have seen it. The film, um, actually, I thought it came out in 2019, but according to the... Uh, what I read today, the movie actually came out in 2018. And this film is one of my favorites. It's another fiction film. And it's called The Man Who Killed Hitler and Then the Bigfoot. Um, if you haven't seen the movie, I highly suggest it. And we're going to play a trailer for it right now. Okay. My grandfather used to tell me stories all about this one soldier. As he got older, the stories got stranger. Some I believed, others I don't know. But it wasn't describing a man. Wallet, keys. It was more like something mythic, legendary. You didn't pull any swords from any stones, did you? But you might have done something. Something bigger, maybe. So how have you been? You look a little tired. What's bothering you? Things I could have done differently. Regrets. Now I shot someone during the war. I never wanted that. Even if he had it coming. And he did. You've heard about the killings? Up north? What's the FBI have to do with it? Imagine all our worst fears about influenza in humans, bovine, swine, all of it coming true to life, only worse. It's the Bigfoot, Ed. They don't want me to kill it. It's the carrier of this plague type thing. Well, that's no good. If we cannot contain the beast, if we cannot destroy it and it escapes, it could mean the very end of our world as we know it. You're the last resort. Well, Mitch, what did you think of the movie? Uh, at first, um, I was very disappointed with it because I judged it by the title, and it's nothing like what the title um, would indicate. Um, had to kind of think about it, slept on it a little bit, thought, and then it just had a, one of those moments with a light bulb, and it's brilliant movie. I mean, 
it's it's the, one of the best movies ever for what it actually is. Um, yeah, and um, lots to talk about. I don't I want to take two hours to discuss it. So um, the the reason I there's a lot of reasons why I like this movie. A, a lot of reasons. Uh, Sam Elliott in particular is one of my favorite actors, but. I, I, I picked this movie because I really liked it. But secondly, I think it's one of the most misunderstood movies that have Bigfoot in its ti- in the title of the movie. <clears throat> because I looked at some of the reviews when it, people came out, when the movie first came out on, and on Amazon and stuff like that. I read a number of the reviews. And then on social media, people were just talking about how they just hated the film and it was too phony and this and that. But, you know, first of all, it is a fiction film. But secondly, the whole story with this the way it starts out in the beginning, here's a here's a guy who's definitely up there in years, and it's it almost like his 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 life has lost meaning. He didn't really have anything to do anymore, and he had had this really adventurous life in his early days. He was a you know a special soldier, you know, and he tracked down Hitler and you know whacked him and and did all this stuff. And then he years later in life, and he's just like got nothing going on. And then the 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 Bigfoot comes into the picture with the FBI showing up at his house and stuff like that and kind of recruiting him for this mission and there's reasons for it you'll have to see the film but it's done very well but it covers his life and where he ends up today and then how the uh the uh, entrance of the issue with the Bigfoot in the movie that shows up kind of revives him to a bit you know kind of revives his life and he goes out there and he and he and he and he tries to accomplish this mission and they tell you why which you picked up in the trailer about how uh how he's going to hunt down Bigfoot and all of that. But there's some stuff in it that almost brought me to tears. I mean, it's a real tearjerker sometimes. But when he finally does catch up with the Bigfoot and stuff, it's some very emotional scenes. Oh, that. yes, yes. You know what very I'm talking so. about? Yep. When, when when he finds it and he, he thought that it had already passed away. And, mm-hmm. you know, when he brings tears in his eyes and, and this isn't what I wanted. And he, and he wept over the death of it in that even though... You know, there was a reason he had to be out there, and it was a threat to mankind and stuff. But I, I just thought it was a wonderful film. Right. Um, from a societal perspective, in today's day and age, it is the most important movie for you to watch right now. It is, I, I'm going to get my note cards out here because there's so much to talk about. There's so much depth. Um, and um, the first thing is, is, is it a guy movie or a girl movie? That term doesn't even matter anymore. Um, a friend of mine posted on Facebook page, and it, it was something anniversary of yeah. Star Wars. It was, um, what was it, um, two, um, 19, um, what was it, 67 or something? No, 77, sorry. And it showed a film of a bunch of geeks lining up to watch Star Wars. There wasn't a girl in that picture. You know, it was just, and that was me. I was 17 years old at the time, and it was like, wow, history. So it's not really a, a guy, it's, it's more of your state of mind, um, and so the movie is full of euphemisms. It's, yes. It's packed. Thank you. And so for yes. you public school educated kids, which I am, and um, is I, I brought my dictionary just so I could read to you so you know what that <laughs> word means um, in this context. So just bear with me a second. And so euphemism, euphemism, um, there's a number of, you know, of different definitions. But the one that's appropriate here would be um, the substitution of an agreeable or inoffensive expression for one that may offend or suggest something unpleasant. Okay, so we're substituting something here. Um, The man, um, played by, um, you know, him, Elliot, and anyway, so... Now, this is kind of like your, your, um, your cliff notes for the movie. So let's talk about some of those euphemism, euphemisms before you... Man, you did your homework. Well, and this was just rushed this morning. I, I was really struggling with it, but now I, I got it. Um, number one, the man. The man represents 70 million American constitutionalist Second Amendment patriots. That's what he represents. And really? He, yes. And, if, and I'll get into a little bit, but that's it. There's, there's Second Amendment, guys, Second Amendment, for those of you, or, you know, it's, we believe in the, the freedom wow. to have guns. He is, to, that's what he represents. Um, I'll, exp, I'll explain another problem with that. But number two, Hitler. Hitler in this movie is not Hitler. 
It could be anybody. But in our day and age, it's Potato Joe Biden. It's, it could be anyone, though. It could be anybody who represents the, quote, figurehead, the talking head of our society. Um, currently, that seems to be Potato Joe. So Potato Joe? Yeah, yeah. What, does he like potatoes? No, he just looks like a potato. Oh. Remember, Mr. Potato Head? <laughs> Think about it. Next time you see Joe talking. The second thing, Bigfoot. And what caught me is the Bigfoot. They didn't say Bigfoot. They said the Bigfoot. And that's very, that was obviously very carefully chosen. The Bigfoot represents, and I'm just going to throw some terms out here. We can all agree to disagree on the correct term. But the Bigfoot represents the deep state, um, the communist Marxist party. It represents whatever's going on out there that they think that we should not be able to have our own weapons. Um, that's what the Bigfoot. And what caught my attention in the movie, oh, man. The, in the movie is, here he is, is that he's, I mean, he is a decorated war hero. I mean, highly skilled, because that's why the, in the storyline, the FBI comes, even though that's not, that's a four-letter word these days. But the FBI comes and, and recruits him. And then he says continually, I shot a man. I shot a man. Really? World War II? And singular, you shot a man? And I didn't want to. Really? That just, it didn't fit. It, to me, that just bothered me, that continual, I didn't, didn't want to shoot. But I got to tell you, in that scene when he's talking with those guys, I, okay, I, that's not what I got out of the movie. Your right. take on it, that's not what I saw in it. But in a certain way, there are some things there. But one thing, there, there are some euphemisms in there. And what if, if you remember, when they're sitting at the table, he's talking to the FBI, he's really upset that they're asking him to go kill again. Yes. And then they t he talked about it, uh, they was probing him about, you know, his history uh, with, with the OSS or whatever, you know, that it was in World War II. And he just kept looking at them before he kicked them out of the, yes. their house. And he just said, I did what they told me to do. I did what yep. they told me to do. I and did. isn't that and what he didn't 70 elaborate. million Americans have done to yeah. this point? We've been doing what yeah. we've been told. And we're done. Fool me yeah. once, shame on you. Fool me twice, so, shame on me. So, yeah, he, he was, but he kept doing what he was told, what yeah. he was to. And he was, he was upset good, about that. He was a good, if in Hitler's army, you would refer to him as a brown shirt. You know, he just did what he was told. They, there was a reference in there to Auschwitz and the trains, and everybody was told, did what they were yeah. told. So, yes, he did, and he did not want to go. And so he's a very, re, he was a very reluctant participant yeah. in that, just as what, my Second Amendment brethren out there, and, well, it doesn't have to be brethren, sisters. Okay, I don't know whatever we call um, that. They're reluctant. And so they don't want, he didn't want to have to take action, but he was forced to it. And then the Bigfoot being, quote, whatever's going on out there in, in our world scene, um, he was very reluctant. But that's the impression I see whenever I look at uh, all the social media. The Second Amendment people, the people, the gun, to as they say, the gun-toting wackos, they don't want to go shoot something. Look at the constraint. If they were as bad as everyone wants to portray everybody that owns a gun, seriously? Okay. You mean you can't take out an Antifa p person as you're going through? But that's not what Americans want. So the analogy with that just is startling to me. But when it, But and this is a good movie for all the Antifa people out there to see. When we get backed into a corner, we will do what we have to do. And that's what he did with the Sasquatch, is the Sasquatch. That's, pre that's pretty heavy. I know, it is. And that's, but that's what the, I, I haven't yeah. looked at further reviews, but I'm almost certain that's what the director and the writer of this was going for, um, is, no, it's, it's like, yeah. And, and just even at the end, you know, I mean, obviously they've already given it, the, the title away, that he yeah. killed Bigfoot. He apologized. He even said, this isn't what I wanted. I don't know if he referred to him as brother or just, I can't remember what he said, but he, he, it was a po very, very powerful point in the movie. This isn't what I wanted. And if well, what's going on in our country continues okay. to go, that will be the sentiment. So, yeah, I got a lot out of okay. it. Okay. And you remember that this show was all about a Bigfoot. Yeah. Okay. okay. It is. <laughs> no, I know. It's all about Bigfoot. Because what, the, what, what I got, okay, as a former soldier myself, Okay, I could relate to this guy. 
yeah. I could relate to his reluctance to want to, you know, commit violence in the name of whatever uh, again. And, and, and I could relate to that. And in, in the, the ending scene, which is very emotional when he finally, you know, catches up with the, uh, the, you know, the, the Bigfoot. And I love that in the movie when he says, you guys have got it wrong. His feet really aren't all that big, you know, or whatever. I thought that was pretty, pretty humorous, but it was just his, his general concern at, at that stage in his life to not want to have to take life, any life, whether it be right. of an animal or something like that. Right. And, uh, and right. that's what I got out of but it. But like you say, the show is about Bigfoot. Because, you know, you know, I have a hard time shooting anything anymore. I mean, I used to hunt. Mm-hmm. I was a big hunter and all that kind of stuff. And frankly, I just, I, 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 I have a hard time pulling a trigger on a deer anymore. Right. You know, for some reason, I don't have a grouse. Maybe it's because they taste so good or something. But outside of that, well, that's a weird take on the movie. But well, well, the, I, more I, to your point about the Bigfoot thing, and, and I know it's something that you're curious about because people were upset with it. And the reason they're upset is it is not a movie about Bigfoot. Period. End of story. It's it's about a whole nother. It's you go Maybe in because people were they were really upset. Over yes, and it's not as a Bigfoot movie. They didn't understand it. But, eh, as a Bigfoot movie, yeah. eh, it's okay. But, but as a movie, it's phenomenal. And no. it's and again, we'll get into this more in later episodes. But to use Bigfoot as part of your storyline just demonstrates how culturally accepted Sasquatch is, is and how we can use that. Wow. But as just far as the title, eh. If you're looking for a good Sasquatch movie, I guess I'll be Ebert. Eh, yeah. It's not so great. But if you want to see a great movie, it's, it's an it's adventure very movie. Very good movie. And, and, and it keeps you guessing yeah. to the end, which I love about movies. There is so many little, I don't know if you call them subplots or, or little facets to this, depending on, you know, that appeal to different people. But there are, there's, there's many different things in here. Anyways, I think we've covered that pretty well. Yep. But I really enjoyed the movie. Um, once again, it's The Man Who Killed Hitler and, and then Bigfoot. The Bigfoot. The Bigfoot. I, I know Key the, word I, in the there. Bug, the the Bigfoot. Bigfoot. That wasn't and, an uh, accident or a typo. Sorry, you know, Sam Elliott. And I want to give credit to the guy who actually played the Bigfoot. And uh, his name was Mark Steger. And I thought he did a great job. He did. Because his feet weren't really all that big. And he knew how to fight. And then that's all we No, got. he stayed in character. What's that? He stayed in character, for yeah, sure. He did a great job. No, that, I didn't think of that. But that was, that. no, that was good. Wonderful. Well, 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 thank you for your mind-blowing no, analysis I'm gonna, I'm gonna of this film. I'm going to watch it again now that I've had this revelation of, oh, okay, okay, yeah, and um, okay, it's a good movie. Wonderful. All right, we're done with the, the movie review, and we're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back with our guest, Kevin Llewellyn from the BFRO. Thank you. This show is sponsored by the Private Money Store Incorporated. They specialize in private real estate lending for commercial or business purposes in Washington State. Okay, my friends, welcome back. And it's that time of the show where we're going to bring in our guest. And once again, I want to say that we have Kevin Llewellyn, who is a BFRO investigator and also an avid outdoorsman. He's a retired veterinarian. He has a lot of experience. And he's been doing Bigfoot for a long time. He's got a lot to share. So please welcome Kevin Llewellyn. Hey, welcome to the show, Good man. to see you again. You too. It's a oh. pleasure to have you here. Thank you for coming. And, and Hi, Mitch. We're, yes. so, we're socially distanced. Yes, yes. We, uh, we've had to change our setup a little bit to socially distance. So we moved Mitch Johnson uh, to a nice little beach area up in Port Chatham, Alaska. And that's where he's going to be coming to you from. I'm an introvert. Um, I, generally now, I, like I, just did keep bring, I did bring you each a gift. Oh. Um, my wife and I earlier this summer made some Sasquatch masks. Oh, nice. Um, oh, whether you want to, if you use them, they're machine washable. If you want to just put them in your Bigfoot library uh, and keep them as a remembrance of Squatching in 2020. And so you just pop them out like this. And actually, these are a bribe so you don't push the BS button on me. <laughs> so I, I was watching last week. Smart man. And so, <laughs> okay. So anyway, um, well, though, well, thank, I brought, brought that for you. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for that. And yeah, the configuration, the table, yeah, I, I'm getting a little jumpy, but, you know, we, we couldn't reach the BF button if we had to. The BS button's out of the way. So anyways, well, Kevin... Could you tell us a little bit more about your uh, work experience and educational background? Because I think that's important. 
Well, I graduated from Washington State University. Um, as far as Washington State University uh, being related to Bigfoot, uh, Dr. Grover Krantz, yeah. the Bigfoot history then right there. Um, so yeah, I was a veterinarian for 35 years and um, retired. So I have more time now, even more time to be out in the woods uh, now. Um, I, I saw, I grew up here in Spokane and as a youngster, I saw Roger Patterson prevent, present the Patterson-Gimlin film live here in the old Spokane Coliseum. And when I first saw that on the screen, the big screen, my brain was, that's not a man yep. in, a, in the suit. That is an animal. Look at that animal. Yeah. Yeah. And now, that, what, for the, for, what, what year was that for the, for the audience here? Um, well, of course, it was filmed in the fall of 67, but yeah. then he did a little bit of a tour. He, I think he went down to, was it Eugene, Oregon, uh, 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 over to Idaho, Boise, Idaho, maybe, uh, Great Falls, Montana, Spokane, and then he went up to Vancouver, uh, British Columbia. And that's where a lot of the primatologists, yeah, yeah zoologists met up there, too, in Vancouver, uh, B.C., to watch the film. I think it's important to stress, too, when you, you were a veterinary student at the time. No, well, this was when I was like 10 years old. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. I was just trying my to clarify age, that I'm out. I'm aging. Yeah. Well, no. Um, yeah. No, no, not a problem. But, uh, a veterinarian yeah. would look at something. Yeah, Do you, the, oh, let me ask you this then. When you see that film now, now that you, you know, you've, you're a trained veterinarian, do you still have the same perception that, no, that is not a human that is something else do you still have that same perception of the film absolutely okay. i don't know if you're aware mitch of that they have they have seen they they keep enhancing the film and they have seen a hernia on the lateral thigh oh yeah, really the outside thigh oh, yeah wow. I've you've seen, seen that, that. Yes, okay yes. that is and and i i've talked to dr meldrum at some conferences and he said that i, I shouldn't probably use his words but he said he had a student in his class that she had fallen off her horse and she had a hernia in the exact same spot on the lateral thigh yeah. as what is seen wow. on in, in the film on wow. on patty yeah. we we call her patty. Uh, patty um when at the, the time you went to the coliseum when you and, and saw this how many people showed up i've been inter- oh that was, was, was it, it back, was back packed back yeah yeah there were a lot of people there wow yeah yeah, well, I remember. And so I followed this. And so then afterwards, he started uh, uh, an association and he sent out newsletters. Uh, he called them bulletins. And I signed up for that and I still have those original uh, bulletins wow. with me. So, so I've been following this topic yeah. then most of my life. Well, this kind of leads into uh, my next question. It was like, how did you get into Bigfoot? How did you get interested? So actually, it started for you at that young of an age. Yeah, it just did. When I watched that uh, on, like I say, being yeah. presented, it, it just hit me. You know, look at that animal, yeah. and um, and 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 so. I, we, we, I, my take on it is that we keep um, is that we're working on a giant jigsaw puzzle, and with a billion pieces, yeah. and each piece represents uh, a, a sighting, an encounter, and and we have to put all these pieces into the puzzle too of the indigenous people's beliefs about yeah. Bigfoot. Yeah. Then and so look if you stop and think about the knowledge and and what we've been learning even since the Patterson-Gimlin film. And so my take is, is too, is, is my approach is one of, of I, I want to keep in having encounters. I want them to come into camp at night after I've gone into my tent. And, and my tent's been shaken numerous times. And so, you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, careful what you wish for. But, um, and so I want to keep uh, having those encounters and it's, and, and each investigator is going to have an, a different a different approach. I want to mention yeah. that right at, too at the start. Everybody's going to do something different, but but um, yeah, I, I'm out there scouting um, uh, with uh, as an investigator with the Bigfoot Field Researchers Organization. Yeah, you know we're out there. We're looking for evidence. We're interviewing witnesses. We're checking hot spots. And and 
I'm sorry and, to interrupt. Yeah, yeah. I'll keep you going on that. But, for, you know, for the benefit of our audience, I, I would like you to explain what the BFRO is mm-hmm. and exactly what an investigator does. Yeah. It's, uh, to be an investigator is by invitation only. Yeah. And we're, and so there's investigators all around, throughout the United States and in Canada. Um, we can share information, evidence with each other then, too. Um, and we put on expeditions so people yeah. that want to uh, put their foot into the water to of, of bigfooting and see you know what what what's hap- what's out there yeah. um people that you know i've been i've been taking people uh, on expeditions that have hardly been camping you know and <laughs> and so you get, yeah and yeah. but but that's what i enjoy then too is to have somebody experience something you know too yeah. um i still remember do my first time my wife heard wood knocks and the look on her face and she said and she knew immediately what they were and she said oh i really hope that was a giant woodpecker (laughs) and so and um you know but so just to you know yeah like i say having you know people get out there and and showing them you know hey Yeah. yeah this stuff is going on out there and so uh my approach then too is that so I'm, I'm scouting for expedition sites. I'm, I'm checking on hot spots, following up uh, uh, where witnesses have, have seen things. And my approach is based on um, the phrase that I think they're curiously afraid. And yeah. what, they, uh, what that means to me is that they are so curious about us, can be so curious about what we're doing, but yet they're afraid you know, of contact. They don't want to be seen. And so I do things, I have a lot of things that I do to try to get that curiosity up and and going. um, You'd sent me something, and I I I want you to talk about this, because I want to talk about evidence, because you have a lot to present, and I want to to ask you about this, uh, what you had sent me here, and it's it's a a flow of evidence chart, and I have never seen this before, and I'd like you to talk about this a little bit yeah <clears throat> well this is this keeps me grounded too uh, just so to speak um i'm always asking myself when i hear something or you know see something find something what else could it be other than bigfoot you know question everything and so like sounds up there recordings of uh, the sounds i don't even think that should be that high I agree. (laughs) Because let me play, let me be a skeptic here for a minute. Um, I have audio, okay, but I'm a skeptic, or you have audio, Steve, and I'm a skeptic, and I say, well, how do I know that that wasn't your friend out there? How do I know that wasn't Mitch out there doing wood knocks? How do I know that wasn't Mitch out there practicing howls and things like that? And so, you know, you'd have to actually have a a sound vocalization analyzed by somebody right. that yeah that compares to known wildlife out there yeah yeah so um what i do one of my goals though is what i would like to have happen is to have one near my audio recorder and have some of the gibberish the chatter like yeah. in the sierra sounds i i, yeah, I, I, always, like, yeah. I always thought that sierra's see i've only heard bigfoot chatter once in my life one time in my life, and it was during this really frightening encounter that I had up on Vancouver Island in the middle of the night in the wintertime and stuff. And it sounded very baboonish. That's what it sounded like. And there was one speaking to another. And mm. after it, it, it came right, I could go into the whole story, but it was very, it came down and touched me and then went away. And it stopped about 20, probably about 20, 25 feet from me. And it kind of did this. It sounded like a monkey kind of go, mm. kind of that. And then the other one responded up there. But it was it was like, you know, you'd Lancelot Link kind of baboonish kind of talking. Yeah. And that's the only time I've ever heard that. I've, the only time ever. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe I just heard that. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and then the other one responded back to it, and that was the end of it. So mm-hmm. the Sierra Sound thing was interesting. Yeah. And, then, and then tracks down there, too. And I think um, uh, a couple of reasons tracks are down there is that, um, well, uh, on social media, I see a, an awful lot of, to me, in my opinion, are bear double steps, the bear, yeah. you know, overlapping bear tracks. And um, so, 
you, you really have to examine the tracks, you, you know, and, and cast them. And then, yeah. and then do we even need to have somebody look at that cast that's experienced right. like a Dr. Meldrum <clears throat> or a Cliff Berrickman? Yeah. You know, yeah. You know, too. But and so but yeah, but but keep casting everybody out yeah. there. Keep casting. Uh, see, um, I, I put more stock in tracks than I do recordings. Yeah. And that's the thing, because you it, like I said, unless you're going to have it analyzed by, you know, NASA mm -hmm. or something like that. And what the what the audio does when when I get audio, what it does for me is that it just it doesn't prove anything to the skeptics out there yeah yeah but it confirms to me because i was there yeah i yeah i i knew where people were at i i knew what was going on we got this audio you know and so the same thing with you you're on your expeditions you know and you hear something you get audio of it it confirms to you yeah yeah i, I mean, heard that. that yeah uh, yeah See what I'm saying? Right, right. So that's that's where the recordings, yeah, that it, it confirms it to me. Yeah. But a skeptic out there, the people out there, they're yeah. saying you people are crazy. You, <laughs> right, yeah, right. You, you know, what, then, you, your friend was out there yeah. howling. You know, I believe it was Grover Kranz who who said this, and I I read it in an article. I think I before he passed away, and and I think it was an article it was like in 2012 or something. And one of the things that he had pointed out um, was it was kind of in the flow of this evidence thing here to a degree that, like, we have thousands of eyewitness accounts, and we have thousands of tracks and or hundreds, you know, all uh -huh. of these things. Mm -hmm. And Grover Kranz said something that I thought was very significant, and this is where my position is. It's time for a body. It's time for a specimen and stuff. And in our expeditions and in the research that we do, that's primarily what we're, we're out for. Hmm. You know, we're going to bring along all the gear now to get the audio and the film and all that. But it's specifically in Port Chatham, when I mentioned that earlier, where we wanted to complete the mission, is we wanted to go up into the area there of the Lake of No Return where we thought the caves were and hopefully find a body. And that doesn't mean go out and, oh, there he is, and shoot him. That's not what we're talking about. Because there, there's going to have to be deceased ones at some point. Hmm where we may find some bones or, you know, things of that nature yeah. that we haven't found. That's just my thought on that. Yeah. And, and my response to that is good luck. <laughs> I, <laughs> I think so, it's like looking for a needle in 10,000 10, haystacks. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, um, and yeah, you know, but, so we're, well, I, I can, and I could keep going to, and with, with DNA, um, I don't know if we want to take more time on this, but, um, what needs to be happen with DNA is we need to see where the DNA come from. Right. We need to see yeah. the suspect. We need yeah. to see on a dash cam a Bigfoot get clipped by a truck and it left skin it, on the it, bumper. Exactly. We need to, somebody who needs to be filming a Bigfoot yeah. running across the field and it catches its leg on the barbed wire fence. Right. And that, and they You've get got the to have a subject. We got, we, yeah. In law enforcement, yeah. you, you know, what, what do we do? We have find, we find DNA at the crime scene and then we have the suspect in custody yeah. and you go, we got the DNA. Yeah. Well, we have to, for DNA really to me, we have to, <laughs> we got to see, find the suspect or see the suspect, suspect leave, leave the DNA sample. Exactly. Cause I, th I, I think a lot of time is wasted on the DNA thing right now. I, I really do because you have nothing to compare it to. And so people are spending a lot of time and a lot of money and all this kind of stuff to say, well, we've got this DNA and it contains a little bit of this and it contains a little bit of that, but we don't know where it came from. And uh, so I don't put a lot of stock in that. I just, I want, I want the body. That's really what we're after. What say you, Mitch, from Port Chatham? From Port Chatham. Well, it's nice weather, as you can see from the photo. <laughs> <laughs> if you've never been to Alaska, it is a great state to visit. So, um, yeah, it's... Um, a, some of the conclusions that are people jump to on the internet, not taking anything away from them. It's just, yeah, there's just a lack of, of evidence, or maybe it's a lack of the presentation. Um, I know myself personally. I, I'm going to look onto the, onto their website here very soon to, to see um, about their upcoming expeditions because all of our travels have been somewhat limited lately. So, um, yeah. I think it'd be it'd be a hoot, as they say. So, yeah. um, to be on to to be on the expedition. Not a, I'm not yeah. a researcher. Yeah. Yeah. We, don't, we don't have any dates set for next year yet uh, because of 
the current situation yeah with yeah. going on but 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 yeah but it may i may even be leading two co-leading uh, two washington expeditions next year for the bfro and also with the my co-leader that's in montana western yeah. montana we don't want to forget about when we talk about the pacific northwest we don't want to forget about See, western montana and i'm really anxious for you to get in and talk about your recent trip into montana because i you know i try to get people to send in information about sightings and this and that and uh, you know anything that, that that's going on and i get very almost nothing out of montana almost nothing although i've got a number of phone calls from people in montana around the missoula area that tell me that if i really want a bigfoot i need to come over there because they're out there hanging around with bigfoot every day every day they can go out every day and it's why am i wasting my time going to port chatham alaska when we can just go outside of missoula montana and they'll introduce me to a whole clan and we'll get to do gifting and we'll get to chat a bit and stuff like that so i really haven't followed up on those but what you've got is some significant stuff so i would like you to jump into that and tell us what you've been up to in montana when you were there and you've got i believe you have some evidence to show us yes mid-september of this year mid uh, there was a bfro expedition uh, in montana and we were uh, set our camp was basically in a horseshoe shape um and so i was over here and the next investigator she had there was a little bit of a gap and she had her car parked then and then on the other side of her car uh, she had her table with her camp stove and then her tent and so we were just a you know a few yards away a little ways away um with one of the, i talked about curiosity one of the things i'd like to do one of the things we do is we'll take an empty water bottle and i'll cr smash it a little bit so that it's really crunchy so that really make this one you know needs to be empty and yeah. really make it crunchy i put one on on uh, i had a five gallon water container on my little table and i put one like this into the handle of the water container so the wind wouldn't blow it away so something with a hand you know need to to pull it out and if you hear the this crunching walking around your camp then and the investigator that was next to me on her car she put an empty water bottle under the driver's side windshield wiper and another water bottle next to it and so we had those set up um the one night and she also had a handheld uh, broadcast uh, speaker and uh, linked to her phone and she had howls then bigfoot howls on her phone that she could broadcast from this speaker and so she went up the valley with some people the one night and myself and a couple guys paralleled her and we were up on the north side of the uh, of the valley uh, up higher and she did some broadcasting i did some wood knocks the next night I went back to the same spot where I was uh, with another guy and she drove up with some other people in a vehicle up the south side of the mountain and there was a point where the road cut back to the southeast and they were going to go up to that point and broadcast. Well I got in position into position and all of a sudden I hear this beautiful Ohio howl and I said to the guy next to me oh she's broadcasting and then 10 minutes later there was another one but they were to the southeast no. and then and so and i said to the other guy i said well they're not in position where they're supposed to be the next thing you know they're on the walkie talkies and we don't i don't like to jabber on back and forth on the yeah. walkie talkie but they did say they said we're picking up a heat signature behind you and to your west and i said well okay uh, let me I'll, I'll go try to look for that i'm gonna you know won't definitely what have you guys broadcasted yet and they said no no so i heard so the behavior was there a bigfoot that heard us broadcasting and wood knocking in that valley the night before and did not respond it came back the next night to see if that bigfoot was still in the valley interesting story now i for our audience here, um, Kevin had mentioned you heard a Ohio howl. And would that by any chance be something that sounds like this? Mm -hmm. 
wow, I didn't waste my money on this baby then, did I? <laughs> because this comes with three other different sounds you may hear. Really? From. Yeah, so let's, okay, the Ohio howl. Now, if I heard that, I'm going the other way. <laughs> well, to me, uh, like I say, uh, I, wa- I, I try to get them in camp, yeah. and we did. Um, then I, I, we, I truly believe then that we had them in camp. Uh, we did get when everybody. Well, with the heat signature thing, I, I went yeah. towards the area. I could not see anything. I radioed back to them and I said, what, you know, I don't see anything with my thermal. What, you know, where is it again? And they said well it's gone now and that's all they said it it disappeared and um so we got back to camp around the campfire for a little while one person all of a sudden he said i heard a thud behind me a little bit later another person said i heard wood knocks behind me to the north and another another person said well a couple minutes ago i heard some wood knocks to the south so then a quarter to so that was friday night quarter to five Saturday morning I was awakened I thought it was the uh, investigators stove that was next to me um, but it may have been the sound of the water bottles yeah. moving yeah because they got moved um, I heard I heard something that clanged this thought it was the stove I listened for a little bit but then I was cold and so I got up and started my tent heater and cl- tent heater tent heater yeah i at my I age gotta get one of those uh, yes <laughs> and, but you go click click you know to get the pilot light going she heard that and i climbed back in she heard me do that i climbed back in my sleeping bag then i heard three whistles to the east and she said then that she had two things thrown at her tent and then you keep going around the horseshoe and there was a guy that was sleeping in the back of his pickup truck, but he had a, a balled off uh, canopy uh, then uh, behind his truck. He heard walking and a hoof. And then beyond him, there was a tent. Okay. I'm there was sorry, a tent that got, had some things, had, had something thrown at their tent. Now, is, you sent me a few audio pieces. And well, those, you, those, are, those were earlier, though. This, that, those were made. Do you have the picture of the water bottles? Yeah, I do. Okay. But you said whistle real quick. Okay. Now, are these the whistles you're talking about? I'd like, I'd like to play no, some. Th- no, these the whistles I sent you were actually from um, uh, earlier in the summer on uh, the Washington Cascades. Okay. Yeah. Were, were, did the whistles so we, that you heard in Montana were they similar to this? They, no, they the ones that I sent you increase in in pitch. You know, right. go higher. Yeah, the ones I it, ones I heard were just the same. Pitch, okay. whistle, whistle, well, since I have this audio up, I just want to play it. Real okay, quick. yeah. If we can, this, yeah. So you can hear uh, three distinct whistles. But this was from the Washington Cascades. I, I, that's a whistle I've heard before. I'm yeah. One more time. If you listen close to that third one, it al- I can almost hear air coming out. Yeah. Some people will say that's a bird, but what this what I was on my audio recorder was actually a, about a forty minute segment that started out with tree branches, rock clacks, and and uh, wood knocks. And if that was a bird, wouldn't it have been disturbed right when there was some yeah. rock clacking and wood knocking going on? Why after forty minutes of off and on Uh, sounds like that that was on my audio recorder then why all of a sudden would a bird whistle three times but but back to montana now this is montana this is montana so this was the water bottles and as you can see they're on the passenger side and they were moved note that there's no raccoon tracks on the hood of the car um they also we found in between her uh, car and my tent on the ground was a uh, empty uh, sour patch candy bag and one of the people had pushed that down into his mesh uh, pouch on his chair the night before over by the campfire mm-hmm. so something pulled i don't know whether a pack rat a wood rat could have gotten that out of there and 
took it over 30 yards, but it was on the ground between uh, nope. my tent and her car. <clears throat> these water bottles. Where were, were these moved. water bottles? They one was under. She put one under the windshield wiper on the driver's side, and the other one was laying then underneath the 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 wiper. They were moved over there like that to the passenger side and note where the trail camera is yeah at. i see is that's what that little trail cam- that's the trail cam. um i um you know your guest last week bill it's like yeah bill keep going i love what he's doing with yeah. the trail cameras yeah because my thoughts on the trail cameras i'm not a fan of them um yeah. you know there's been yeah people have thought oh bigfoot sees the infrared coming from them P- there's a sound a frequency or something right coming from, yeah yeah yeah. Stuff, yeah and 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 now what i really think is that they're putting out an electric field yeah. everything puts out an electric field you know our heart yeah. you can we can you can do an ekg an ecg on our heart and see the you know see how it's uh, going but um the so i just don't like strapping uh, trail cameras to trees either like yeah. you know like you guys talked well, about last week yeah. so i've been putting them on my truck yeah yeah to try to disguise them yeah I, and we had one right there and it was not triggered whatever moved those water bottles yeah did not trigger the tra- that trail yeah. camera yeah i uh i i it, to me it's an ex- exercise in futility to pull a trail cameras, but we do it as a <laughs> yeah know. well well the saying goes if you don't put any out then you have zero yeah. percent chance of catching anything what i on, yeah what, on, what, on the audio uh, when we go out now what I, I i bring a whole infrared camera system that records on a loop and stuff and, yes. and i've actually gotten a few not sure what that is kind of thing on those but i really like those systems and we'll run it the whole time we're there we'll continuously yeah. um, run the camera systems and i like those so is, she was looking at the uh, sorry yeah. she was looking at the the front end of her car for hair then yeah. you know looking for evidence looking for hair and she said kevin come look at this and here in the uh, grill of the car there was a cigarette butt smashed in the space of the grill and there were cigarette butts not from us but around the campfire from yeah uh, campfire ring from other people and why would a person if if she stopped at a convenience store while driving to montana why would a person stuff a cigarette butt in the grill of your car did did the car have washington plates uh, yes (laughs) (laughs) There could be a possibility. It, but, well, it's Montana, you know. Uh, <laughs> um, anyway, yeah. uh, well, but so um, so so we found so those things, and then we go around to where the person heard the walking yeah. or the stomping. We found three tracks that were in the hard ground. Amazing. So you found three tracks three around tracks. your camp. It, yes, where he heard. This was over where he heard yeah. him heard walking. And I think he, that it may have even been something that just stomped yeah. and, you know, and yeah. because the depth of them. And we also found another impression, too, using a, a tracking pole. And if your viewers have not, don't yeah, know how yeah, to make a tracking from, pole or exactly how to use it. Exactly. Explain what a tracking pole is. Oh, boy. Well, it's just, it, it, it um, I almost need to demonstrate sometime. But if you find uh, two tracks, then you, you make a pole and you go... Um, he, you make heel to heel then length of the, so you make, you see, so you put a notch in a, in a long stick or a long pole, you put a notch back here and at the heel of the one track, then at the heel of the next track is the end of the pole. Then you also up here, make a notch where the front of the first track is. So then you take that pole and you move it up to the second track. And so you have that notch or rubber band yeah. or whatever at the heel of the second track. And the other notch, this should match pretty close then to the front uh, of that second track. And then out at the end of that pole, of that tracking pole, 
should be somewhere out in there. You start kind of sweeping it that around. That is interesting. I've should never heard heel. of this before. Okay, so do you understand? Are yeah, you following that? Yeah, I follow, yeah. exactly. So you're yeah. starting oh. to follow. Where's yeah. the next That's he- <laughs> That's pretty bright. Where, where's the need? next heel? Yeah. Well, it's a tracker's. I'm not a certified tracker. Yeah. yeah and ne- let neither me say am I, that. But, but. <laughs> okay, so we found, and so we casted the... I do not have all three casts. Uh, it's nice yeah. to keep a little track line together, but yeah. it's also nice to share. And so two other investigators took the other two tracks. Uh, they, mm-hmm. they looked a little better, but I wanted to keep this third one because it stepped on a root and it cracked now, now the you're gonna, root. You're going to show us that track, right? Yeah. yeah. And so it, it broke, it cracked this root, but look at the de- look at the ground, the rocks, yeah. the pebbles in there, the hard, how hard the ground was, and and you can see the depth. If I show it that way, in that yeah. hard ground, and and like track number two, it, I could not believe the depth of it, yeah. in that hard of ground, and so it it wasn't a bear, a bear having its weight spread out over four paws, in that yeah yeah. It, it and, just, and how long is that track? Um, about Roughly, 13 and a half inches. About 13 yeah. and a half it's, inches. It, like I say, it doesn't, it's not as good. The only reason that I kept this one, like I say, it was, it was in line with the other two. This was number three. And I just wanted to, you know, to show some action. So, yeah. you know, so yeah, that, you know, stepping on a root like that. So, yeah. um, and wow. So speaking of of casts, uh, yeah. we can I can keep on going here to then yeah. to my sighting. In yeah, I would, May. yes. Now the sighting that you're going to describe for us was at this time when you got this out on this expedition where you got this no. Track? This was Montana. This was in you know, the water bottles and that that was mid September of okay. 2020. Okay. Um, then and so I had my sighting on May 14th. 2020 and where spring. was that and that was in the cascades yeah, washington the, cascades no, yeah and sunny day um um 2 30 in the afternoon we daytime were, daytime yeah uh, we were going up the and, and it was a road crossing and when i say road crossing i know you're going to ask me questions well well how many steps did it take to get across the road how tall was it <laughs> that, well <laughs> i'll keep going here because this was yeah. unique um so we uh, there, we were climbing an elevation. We were going up this Forest Service road. The uh, there was a road that took off to our right, which went up a ways and dead ended. There was a couple elk down there at that one. Then just a little further beyond was another road that cut up to the right, and we went up that one. And it was starting to get overgrown. Um, the boughs of the trees starting yeah. to come out. And in fact, even further beyond uh, down the road, there was a stretch where it was really overgrown. I put a long scratch down the side of my truck. But as one guy told me one time, that's not a scratch. That's called cascade pinstriping. <laughs> so my truck is detailed with cascade pinstriping. But we go around this corner. I drive around this corner. And uh, uh, my friend and fellow investigator was in a car behind me with his wife. So I'm alone in my truck, though, in the, fr- in the lead. I come around this corner, and I look up ahead on a little bit of a straightaway, and there was this big boulder to the left and a steep bank of dirt and sand going up like this on the left side. And I, I'm getting closer and closer. I'm not, I can't even tell you how fast I was driving, you know, and yeah. I'm approaching. And I see on the side of the boulder, it was, and I measured the boulder later, was three and a half feet wide, three and a half feet tall. On the side towards the bank, I see this black. And I'm just thinking, well, there's black decaying chunks of wood all over the forest. There's yeah. just, yeah, something laying. There. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting closer and closer to the boulder, and all of a sudden, what leaps out, <laughs> leaps fr- out, leaps across the road in front of me. The best way I could get the picture in your mind to describe it, that it was as, as if a, it was a linebacker leaping to go tackle the quarterback. But there were no arms outstretched. There were no front legs. There was no bear snout. There were no ears sticking up. It was black, uh, hair about the length of a black bear, but, but this was no bear. I'll say it a million, million times. And 
so I can I can demonstrate what 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 I what it would look like because it and it really confused me at first because I saw this thing sticking up and my brain was like there's like a wingtip there at its lower back and it was like what what is that well it took me a while to process and I kept replaying it and replaying it in my mind and what it looked like then is I'll get into the position okay then and this is what was in midair so you know this is what was so it was airborne so this was it was yeah it leaped yeah. i mean you know so so uh, uh you know in track and field you know your jump your yeah uh, yeah yeah. Uh, yeah so anyway so this is what went across and so like i say it, it, it wasn't a moose it wasn't a bear and it was in this position then it, its head also too was a little bit conical shaped and um and it then like I say looked about maybe like a linebacker so if, if a linebacker is like six two you know 220 yeah. pounds give or take then and so i'll get in this position and um and i'll see all it. right let's okay. see it so you're so you're behind this, the 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 wheel i'm behind i'm driving you're driving okay and this and boulder oh. over here and this leaps out and it was in if i get my, get my hand here it was in this is the position as a leaf. And this is what, like I say, this was its hand and fingers. That was, that was its hands and fingers sticking up. And, and it, like I say, I, so and my you, mind was. Well, did you like slam on the brakes or what? what I, I mean, can't even tell you what I did. Yeah. I don't know whether I stopped or not. I, I, I forgot to even ask my friend like what, but we did. And I, and, and it seemed, I can't even tell you then quite what the distance was because I was moving. Yeah. But it, and it, it seemed very close in my mind then and what I saw. And, 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 and then, so of course we stopped Yeah. and I said to my friend, I said, what you're not going to believe what i just saw and he didn't see it because they you know were back behind me um and we looked on the edge and he said and he actually saw he said look it looks like there's almost two impressions here where it landed because it landed on the other side of the road and i saw for three seconds or so i saw this black butt just there it's a like black it's, butt uh -huh, like it landed in a crouching position oh. And I couldn't see the rest of the body's body because, like I say, boughs were growing out, uh, yeah. trying to grow out onto the uh, onto this road on the edges of the from the edges of the road. So the body was blocked, and so the side of the other side of the road went like this. You know how some of these yeah. Yeah, the Forest Service right. roads go like that. So, like I say, my my friend found or saw like these almost two impressions where it landed. We look down on the hillside, and here's this slide, this sliding track, and and then down, and then even further down beyond that was where like something else slid. The dirt was just was just slid, and I went down there, and I was going to try to start to take pictures. I, I take I try to take like five pictures of every track that I find. Yeah. For each from one from each side, one from the front, one from the back, one over the top. I started to get close to get close to the track. And I slipped myself and went sliding on my hip. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to mix up my casting material up on the road. And then I'm yeah. going to come down and try to pour it and do the best I can to keep the casting material uh, on this sliding track. And, and then here's what yeah, I got. Yeah, you have a track to show us, right? Let's take a look at that. Now that is... <clears throat> That, that's a big track. Well, a, actually, this is where it slid. This, so, like I say, when I call it a sliding track, yeah. this is the sliding part that I tried to get cast material up <clears throat> to catch that part. So, um, so actually, it doesn't start until probably in here where it it pushed off, where it more it compressed the ground more. Yeah. Yeah. You turn, and how, so, how thick and, is it? So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, oh, yeah, can you turn it this way so that they can all get a look at the front side of that too? But what but we could see and it pushed dirt. Okay. This you can see where my cast material 
uh, it pushed dirt into the front because it's it slid. It's yeah. like there there was a, a foot that slid, yeah. and and some people will say, well, did you see the Bigfoot make this track? No, because it went over the what I saw went over the edge. Right. Yeah, and so <laughs> but this is what we found immediately. You know, then afterwards, and you can make out it, what I like is is the, if the toes splayed, it's like there's a spread. Yeah. See if the. See, yeah, if the ball of the ball of the uh, you, you see a lot of tracks. Room. I mean, it's like you'll see now. For reference, uh, can you, you able to see that, Mitch? Okay. Oh yes, definitely. Yeah, for reference, can you grab the? You have a replica of the Patty track. Yeah. For the Patterson Gimlin, uh-huh. could you could you grab that? I want y'all to see this. He's so, got he's got a replica yeah. of the. So uh, this is a a copy. Yeah, yeah. Of, from the yeah the Patterson Gimlin. Uh, film from Patty making this, yeah. and so and so here are the the toes like yeah. that, and like that. But look at the size of that. Well, like oh, I say, rem- remember down see, down here though is is where it slid. Right, right. Is that where part it of it slid on the hillside. So, you know, because we've got like up here in Ponderay, we've got a number of track castings down, and some of them. That, which is interesting is, the, you know, the toes are all splayed out, you know, if that's right terminology and stuff. They're not perfectly, you know, looking like a, a regular foot like the paddy one is. They're, they're, some of them, the t- well, the majority of them that we're seeing up there, the toes, it's like there's some kind of weird thing with their toes that they do. They, they splay out like that, sometimes at weird angles. And, you know, I was looking up some, uh, the uh, cripple foot tracks from the uh, 19, was it 69 Bosberg yeah. up there north of uh, uh, Stevens County, where which was a really famous, there were some sightings, but it was the track thing with it. And when you look at the tracks, the, the crip, they call it the cripple foot because one of them seems to be really messed up foot wise, but then they have another casting and stuff, but the, the toes do that. Mm, yeah. And I think that's interesting because you've got different Bigfoot that have different foot configurations. You know the layouts of the foot, which I find are interesting. Well, yeah, and this was, in, like I say, this was if this this was in motion. This yeah. was on a hillside, steep hillside, and it you know pushed, like I say, pushed dirt up yeah. in in front of it, and but yet we were able to catch uh, catch some uh, like toe uh, type. Now, uh, now, once again, can you say generally w- where you were at? You said North Ca- the Cascades, the east slope of the Cascades, east Washington lo- Cascades. Yeah. So, Washington. what's the nearest yes. town? um seattle <laughs> no, <laughs> no 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 yeah no not you don't don't go over the pass no it's okay. on like i say it's on the east side of, of the washington cascades okay. yeah okay and that's your and, secret hot spot now well 10 weeks later yeah. there was a bfro we had a, a yeah. bfro expedition there and there was another uh, another investigator had a sighting of a black one a daylight sighting so it's an area on, that you guys are still actively so in. Uh, yeah so well, I, I want to keep going back right. to that area for sure i have to ask you and i don't know if the, you know you hear a lot of rumors but I, I i heard a rumor uh you know this past year well this year back in spring that you guys had spent a, a few months up in ponderay county up where we've been at was that was a bfro oh, up there doing some things oh i well there uh, my last fall um uh, myself and another bfro investigator uh, were in northern idaho yeah. and um and i had again i had that um that stomping by my tent yeah. and it just shook the ground I, yeah. you know as i'm laying there in my sleeping bag and you know and i'm thinking okay because uh, i'm always questioning i'm always saying okay what else could it be so I'm thinking, okay, a deer bounded by my tent. In the right. morning, I'm going to see deer tracks out here. No, there were 16-inch impressions. I used the morning sunlight, you know, use, use yeah. the sunlight to look for your tracks right. and your impressions. Yeah, I could see in the morning sunlight with the angle like that of the light, and I could see these impressions of going by my tent. There, yeah. there were no deer tracks. Yeah. Yeah. Right and okay, so. and so that uh, you've the, you had the track that was near your tent, and that was the, this this one here. 
Uh, tra- this other one, yeah, this other one was from the uh, then the ten weeks later, the Washington Expedition, and that was when we had the whistles going on, yeah. and wood knocks and everything that one night where these near where these two guys were, and we had a person about a thousand feet higher than us yeah. camping, and I've known him for like four years, yeah. and very credible, and he was checking behind his camp every day. Uh, there was a, a major game trail and a little stream, and in between the game trail and the stream, the ground was was very soft. It was like firm mud. Yeah. And so, and he was checking, and then he got up Saturday morning and went to do his little check, and he found this track, and this is an example of how frustrating it can be out there yeah. because the toes landed on a stick. If yeah. you'd have been there with me to see it, you know, yeah. before I casted it, you, you would have been going, wow. But after we get the cast, though, like this, you almost, well, I have to call this inconclusive. Right. But if you would have been there with me to see yeah. it. Yeah, let's take a look at that. Can you just hold? And this is this is and this one is uh, 16 inches long, 16 and a half inches long to the stick back to the heel. Six. Look at the size of that. Well, look look how it's not a bare double step. Yeah. It, there's no there's no claws back in here where the second paw right. of a bear would have landed. <clears throat> Look how straight the sides are. There's no uh, instep. There's no there's no anything like that. Yeah. Uh, straight sides to it. Um, if I turn it this way, I don't know if they can can see, but you can <coughs> kind of see the dip where the if the ball of the foot was in here, and you can kind of see a little dip going to the toes where the toes were and you, you may start to maybe pick up a little bit of one. yeah you can kind of yeah, see a little bit of the little, toe action toe right there yeah wow and, and um and so yeah we're uh, okay. but uh, if it if it would have just stepped two inches yeah further back. it's really tough i mean i'm looking at what you got it's really tough to find a good trick didn't you have so, one more uh, <clears throat> no i think that that's all the tracks i brought wow Wow. So as, as as far as track, but that's yeah. that's how frustrating sometimes you know it can it, be. It, it, that, and so sometimes uh, what you what you see yeah. um, then before you cast is better than yeah. than the, when the cast turns out, like you mentioned. You oh know, yeah, 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 and it's, it's tough. Just, like yeah, it, it just you know, happens. You know, I in two th- since two thousand and fourteen is really when I you know really started working on the. Bigfoot investigations and expeditions and stuff like that. And then in that entire time, I've only casted two tracks. Yeah. I mean, that entire it's, time. Yeah. Because I really haven't found anything that's yeah. been worthwhile. So you can, what do you you'll think? Fi- you can, you'll find, you'll maybe find a lot of impressions. Yeah. Yeah. You'll find a lot of a lot impressions. Of impressions and that's where that tracking pole, yeah. the tracking stick, See, and it lets you try to keep going, keep yeah. following the impressions. It, it would have been, when we, fa- when we found the trackway going up from the beach, in Port Chatham, Alaska in 2018. That's, we found two really nice impressions in the moss, but it wasn't anything that you could cast. They were just impressions. Yeah. And then as it went up into the, up the, what I call the Valley of Death, there were, to- you could see toe marks where it was running and, and, and the, the toes were gripping as it was running up, you know, up, up into the woods, up the valley there, up towards that lake and stuff. But man, I, I learned a lot from you today in particular, the uh, track pole. That's brilliant. Well, the, it's the a tracking it's a, stick. Yeah, I, I mean, like, I, like I say, I'm not a certified yeah. tracker, but that's a tracker's yeah. uh, a tracker's technique. Yeah. Then yeah. that way too. Yeah. What do you uh, say about that, Mitch? Oh, I'm just I'm reminded of my time back in university, as they say in other parts of the world. Uh, it's like I'm sitting at a lecture uh, at WSU, and um, I have a better understanding and appreciation for veterinarians just having. <laughs> graduated to WSU, yeah. a lot of friends, classmates over the years. Um, yeah, very misunderstood yeah. profession, to be honest with you. So yes, um, yeah, I'm really so happy that you took, you took the time to come here and talk to us. Yeah. Um, Love your veterinarian. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, you know, just, and two, and you know, I, I, I just got a couple quotes for your one quote. I don't know how, how yeah. much time we have yeah. left, but, but um, you know, 
a lot of people will say, yeah, you guys are crazy. Or I'm, they'll say, I'm crazy. You're nut. You're nuts. Yeah. You know, okay. But, but I like this quote. Um, I like the mystery. You know, like I say, yeah. I, like, I like taking people out that have hardly camped before, that have hardly been out there before. Um, and, and so here's a quote uh, by Chris Van Allsburg, uh, the author of Jumanji and the Polar Express. He said, the inclination to believe in the fantastic may strike some as a failure in logic or gullibility, but it's really a gift. A world that might have Bigfoot and the Loch Ness Monster is clearly superior to one that definitely does not. I like that. Thank you. I love that quote. Yeah. Thank you for sharing uh, sharing that quote with us. I really do. I like that. And I want to thank you very, very much for being on the show and sharing some of your experiences and especially the tracks. See, I love tracks. I love looking at tracks. I mean, you've got some phenomenal stuff there. Is anything what anything else coming up that you've got going on here, or is it you on hold like us with the COVID thing? That and winter time. Yeah, and winter time. <laughs> so. Yeah, winter's among us. Well, once again, I'd like to thank Kevin Llewellyn for coming on the show, and uh, look forward to hearing more about what you're doing in the future. Oh, you've been great seeing you again. Hope to see you soon. You bet. Again. Yep. Thanks great. a lot. Thanks, and, uh, we're, Thanks. We're, we're gonna slip into a break now. Well, welcome back to the show. Boy, that was some interesting stuff. What do you think, Mitch? Oh, it just uh, kind of blew my mind away. Uh, I've never thought of, of veterinarians being the logical experts to listen to about <laughs> Sasquatch, but it makes total sense. Um, absolutely. Um, I don't know what most people feel, but, you know, when someone starts to speak about th this topic, yeah. I'm just kind of like, what makes you an expert, you know? Yeah. And if you are a veterinarian or or a retired veterinarian or whichever, man, your credibility goes through the roof. Um, yeah. You've studied every animal out there. So when he says it's not a bear, no, yeah. it's not a bear. Yeah. I mean, you just take that to the bank, you know. The, the, the sighting that he had where it was jumping across the yep. road, and especially that's interesting to me. And I mean, that's exciting too. I'd love that's to see little, something like that. Oh Plus gosh. it was at, what did he say, 2.30 in the afternoon? Yeah. You know, a lot of people... Um, think that majority of Bigfoot sightings actually occur at night. And I've actually done some research on that, and I may be misquoting them. I hope not. I, I, but one site that I really like is Squatch and Matrix, and they have uh, they break down all this data about, you know, when sightings occur and da-da-da-da and all this kind of stuff. And I found that actually most sightings do occur in the daytime, wow. not in the evening, which I found is interesting. Well, we've ran out of time, and I want to thank you again for uh, watching the show. We hope you learned a lot. We sure did. It was a pleasure having Kevin on. And uh, that's all the time we have now. So be well, my friends. Be kind to one another. And we'll see you next week. There's a fable of a beast that once roamed this land. Some say it still exists as a big, tall ape man. Standing over eight feet tall, quite a sight to see Living in the forest, he's quite a mystery Bigfoot, Bigfoot, roaming through the land Bigfoot, Bigfoot, a hairy ape-like man